Welcome to Too Old Farts Making Noises. You're now watching Too Old Farts Making Noises. Welcome to Canadian Art Today. With your host, Paul Constable. Hey, Paul, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. And for everybody watching, Paul has a glow. Apparently, he's a green glow, so he's an alien. Um, green glow. Apparently, they're they're coming sooner than we were told. So yeah, I don't go. know what that's all about. Anyway, I'll just beam in for the morning. So. There you go. Scotty will beam you out later, not to worry. If we had well, good special yeah. effects or David was here, we could do all that. So uh, We have an artist that likes special effects that's on today. And I there think you go. The, uh, um, maybe that's why this is all about. I don't know what this. There kryptonite. And kind of like a kryptonite guy. That's what it I is. I know, right? And so, like, Superman's not coming today, which is a good thing because then he would be defeated. He would be by done. I would have him yeah. down on the ground. He'd be finished. There you go. <laughs> well, tell us about the surge because this is very exciting. I've looked at some of his work. It's, he's a fascinating guy. Yeah, Serge Richards um, from Frederick. Uh, actually, he's from New Brunswick. And uh, we have, uh, I guess, I call him a Renaissance man. I mean, I'll put a, <laughs> a tag on him for that. I mean, here's a guy who. Um, he's educated uh, uh, as a, a graphic designer uh, from Yale to Charlatan from Holland College, and he's got to finish his uh, arts uh, with um, University of Moncton. And he's been everywhere. He's done some theater stuff, some film, um, photography, painting, drawing, and he's doing actually this last, I, I don't know, maybe the last 10 years, he's been really concentrating on uh, some environmental uh, installations and, and I just want to working with found objects. Um, I think it's, it, it's really encouraging to see that artists are actually taking the lead on a lot of these things that need to be spoken about. And, uh, Serge is doing that. I mean, he's going publicly with a number of different shows and, uh, I think, I think we just want to bring him on and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll just talk to him about what he's doing. And, and there he is. is. Yeah. Hey. Hey Welcome guys. to the show. And as we discuss, I'm going to leave now because I know nothing. And me saying it's pretty, nobody cares. But everything you do is gorgeous. It's pretty. It's beautiful. Everybody should buy it. We'll put all the links below. There's my plug. Have a wonderful show, guys. We'll see you at the end. Cheers. Yeah, Thank see you at the end. Thanks, Stephen. Hey, Good morning. Good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well, I guess, as, as well as can be. I think it's you've got snow a little bit. We don't have snow. And yeah, moderate, modest weather. I can't complain at all about what we're doing, but uh, we've been through a bit of your work, and I thought it's um, we had a bit of a preamble here the other day about uh, where you want to go with this. You you do everything, man. You got paint. You do. I guess as an artist, you do what you have to do. Is that is that kind of yeah? You do what you like to do a little bit, but what you're capable of doing, and you uh, you do painting, drawing, and illustration you do some graphic work maybe not quite as much as you used to but uh, we'll go through some of those things that you've done and uh and what are going to be doing so where where is the environment as part as a focus in your work now is it is it forefront more this last four or five years yeah um that would be a good description i guess it's um uh it was it's it was kind of hard to miss. Uh, I come from Saint Louis de Kent. Uh, it's a small French town in uh, in New Brunswick, near uh, uh, Moncton in that area, Kishpeguac National Park. And uh, my dad was uh, had a, a mill um, where they would bring you know trees and stuff. So it was so I was <clears throat> close to that as was as I was growing up. Um, so there was forest uh, in the area and all that stuff. And uh, later on in the past, uh, what, 10, 12 years, I think, I moved to Kedgewick, uh, New Brunswick, which is up north, uh, northern part of the New Brunswick, north, north Nice. And uh, this is an area where it's really forest industry, uh, big time. And um, I, as you know, I do photography, um, 
both for reference and also for for statements. Um, and uh, it's if I may, uh, I'll I'll just bracket this small story okay. and where it led me to really um, uh, kind of uh, start saying something. Anyways. Um, You'll learn Sam better after this. Uh, so basically, when I when I first moved in uh, in this area, um, I was taking with the panoramic view because uh, we're higher uh, in elevation. In in it's, I think we're it's at the end of the Appalachian um, um, mountains. I'm not pronouncing that right, but anyways. Long story short, um, I went out into one of these uh, forest um, roads for the trucks to move in and out the, the wood, and I got lost. I, I went an hour into um, field, and um, but but I found some really nice places to take some pictures. But when I came back home, I, I kind of looked back at the uh, Google map um, where I was lost and I, I kind of found find myself. I said, oh, okay, that's where it is. But when I panned out, I realized that the clear cutting that I was seeing around the, on the road that, that was leading there, um, it was, it's a vast area. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, well, you know, that looks like a football field and stuff. And it's like, Oh no! This is this is this is not. Um, uh, it made me realize it was it was really a shock to 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 see l'ampleur, to see the extent of of the wood. And I know I'm not saying we don't need wood. We need wood for house. We need wood for for heat. We're using wood for heat. I'm using wood for 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 my. Uh, my sculptures. So, uh, but anyway, it brought me to this issue of um, how this this management of the forest. And and I'm not an expert uh, by no means. Uh, I don't claim to be or per se. But at the same time, I was learning from the locals the issues. You know, there's a lot of people being employed uh, as because of the forest industry, and but also um most are aware of the situation you know the the clear cutting and how it's um um because you have clear cutting and you have selective cutting anyways those those two uh, things brought me to closer and with my background um experience kind of thing that's that's where i i i I was I was taking uh, it. It had an impact, positive and negative, uh, in the sense. And then I, I it it kind of grew on me. Um, it it was not necessarily expected. It's not like say, oh, I'm going to say something and I'm, you know, revindicate and stuff. <laughs> it, it was more like um, it's like wow, what if. It, it it came out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's it was not so much intellectual. It's like the more I absorb myself in the area, the more I learned about this and that, um, the more it transpired into the way I saw things and the way I expressed things. And and I guess the installation spoke to me better because it was more immersive. Uh, being in the wood, I can't bring, you know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can do a maybe I can do a, a gallery in the woods maybe later on, but uh, not today. Well, you know, bringing an audience into awareness is uh, it's sort of like bringing them into the clear cut. You know, you, they if they have not gone out and got lost in the forest and found the same thing you found, they have no experience of that. They, they work their day job, they're in the city or in their own rural area and they're farming or they're doing whatever. They haven't been in that other area. To understand what was going on it happens right across canada from bc even in the prairies it's happening the mm -hmm. same exact same i've i've gone through and actually done paintings of the same of a clear cut mm -hmm. um but the thing is when you start you start waving a flag uh, you understand that there are people that don't like that flag 
mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you you know you don't get that art show because it may be thought of as anti what that environment what they're doing in that area to make a living and whether it be the oil industry or uh whatever like mining um but and forestry being the other one so as an artist you, you you've got a you know where are you on this yeah you know drawing awareness not only to your own work but mm-hmm. to a big issue i mean this bigger issue than an individual so i found that these kind of things feel like it's a lonely world as an individual going out waving a flag that be aware there's something going on over here there's something we should be aware of this but you're an individual and you can be beat up pretty quickly you might not get your grants and you might not get um uh, i guess a podium or a place to present your 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 thoughts Mm -hmm. and that and I'm you know, thankful for a lot of the public galleries because they do, you, you can make your submission, you can present what you need to present. So at least there's a venue in some of those things. I think we're going to start our first slide up here. We'll just get a context of, uh, I think we get Stephen going here. Yeah, hmm. we'll just get small off to the side. My green glow will be just a little bit less than, <laughs> I don't know what's going on this morning with my background. But anyway. Wow, this is this is. I mean, when I saw, I, I think I've watched you over the years while building on your studio a little bit, and uh, you finally you're in, and it looks like Hansel and Gretel's little place. Like it's just nestled away in the woods. It looks it's so, uh, uh, and I love it as a black and white. And I, I did a couple little insets here so people can see a little bit about your inside. So it's all nice, toasty, warm, and uh, mm-hmm. I think. What is it, how important it is, is it to build your own, your own studio, like to build your own space? Well, uh, um, important. I, I never thought of it as being important, but I think it's, it's certainly useful. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, st- I started my studio, my first studio was uh, my bed and my art table. I had one foot separate from one another and and it you know it grew it's like I never had this dream I I never thought I would come across this little house what you see there there's a lot of construction around there but um, it it kind of grew and um, uh, certainly when you can make space for you to create um, it, it it changes it helps it could be a small area on your desk that you put your paints and you leave them there so you don't have to open the, the case and open the canvas and open the uh, i mean open the box and all that stuff but it's ad- ar- already laid out and if you have the urge to do it you do it right now kind of thing so i think we're all like that to a degree um and uh, obviously this house, this studio uh, that you're seeing, um, is it was like well, I was gonna, say, it's it's kind of a dream come true, I guess. Yeah. I put a lot of work. It's been five years so far, and I still haven't finished inside. What you, the um, the little picture that you see on the bottom um, right. What? Yeah, that's inside the studio. The top one, that's like, that's actually behind me here. That's in the house. So I'm sitting in, in my house right now, in our house. Um, and anyways, so just to give you, it's not finished inside the studio, but it's a workspace. I have a, 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 a metal shop, a wood shop, etc. So, but it is very important, and especially the 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 work that I do, I especially because it's so big sometimes i need space and also construction tools so to yeah. store to store this and stuff and i like to de- decorate so uh well what do you know yeah well you know you need and i found storage space being one of the biggest problems for an artist that works large especially with the installation work and uh sculpture it just gobbles up space like crazy uh paintings you can drawings you can stack in the drawer or Take them off stretchers if you have to and things but sculpture you can't you can't squish it down into something smaller you need 
Uh, and, you know, it's not as if that sculpture is on the road 24-7. Like, it's it's not. Yeah. It's in yeah. storage half the time. And then if you can get it out and on the road again, it, it's it's a bonus. It gets you some free space for a little while. But they're kind of short-lived spaces. And I'm presently doing something like that. I'm moving one sculpture from one gallery over to another one for the spring. Like, it's like there it's a couple hours drive between the spaces but it it, it alleviates my my studio space uh, i got some leg room now i can move around otherwise i'm storing it in a heated space and i, I can't give up that space so mm -hmm. it's a bonus for me that we we're able to do that so um no i love i love i think personally i think studio spaces if you ever have a chance to build new or reno something i think they become an installation in themselves because they, they they're really important i think to an artist to have a space i used to have to work on the kitchen table and then clean up before supper and and just didn't have space and pretty soon i was in a basement and i hate going downstairs for some reason into a basement they got a eight foot ceiling and everything feels yeah but when you can get out and there's light and a bunch of different things. I think it changes your uh, mental mm -hmm. um, outlook a little bit when you get windows and light and things around. Yeah. Um, let's just talk about some of the things that you've worked on. I mean, here we've got uh, an object, um, obviously a chair. Uh, can you can you take us through what you're thinking about in a piece like this? Um. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's, you know, the, the object itself is beautiful and you decided at some point that it needed something like a refurbishing of something or a comment on something. And I'm just wondering, um, where were you going on this? I mean, I just, I love this. I love this image. It's, mm -hmm. Um, thanks. Um, how can I explain? Sometimes um, this this actually this is one chair. I have four, and this is part of of a series that uh, I'm about to put out. So I've just kind of posted this one. So so far, <laughs> uh, the other ones are are still in progress. But I've been documenting these chairs for the past two years outside inside etc so so there's a lot to come uh in in the future but but honestly paul sometimes um uh, for example when i received these chairs these were given to me uh per se i didn't actually build the chair and design it per se but these chairs were given to me uh as as a gift i guess uh and um, I wasn't going to use them per se, but I liked the idea that maybe I could, uh, well, uh, burn them. I, I didn't really know why per se, but I have, I just wanted to put the fire to it without the glass, of course. Um, and, and it grew from there. Um, as far as... What it speaks to me, it, 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 it um, how can I say? At the time when I was when I'm doing it, sometimes it's not it's not always clear. It's it's almost like a, a I'm I'm just using a, a metaphor, but it's almost like a dream. Sometimes in dreams, it's you, you get the images, the pictures, the action, the the, the emotions. And you wake up and it's not really clear what what it was all about and it's only when you work through it then it's like oh okay yeah i can see that relating to one another so so when it came to making the glass for example um i had i said yeah i instead of a cushion i need something that's fragile and and almost distorted and if that um Sometimes there's happy mistakes. When when I uh, first uh, fused uh, this glass, it's this this uh, piece here um, was fused about uh, 
uh, about three times, two or three times, I think it's three. Um, and along the way, I set my um, my ramping time just um, wrongly. So, so it ended up cracking, but uh, I decided to fuse it again and and then it, it spoke to me more <laughs> that way than if it was plain and, and uncracked in the first place. So, so sometimes, and, and the, the story behind it is um, as, as far as meaning the, the, the meaning, um, it's, that's not clear yet. <laughs> maybe that uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Maybe no, that's, no, that's right. It just, it's like it's it, it speaks to me, but it's it's not. I I can't say I can put it into words. But well, it uh, it has a it has. But in the context, a, excuse me, Paul. But in the context of the other four chairs, it there's there's that conversation going. There's there's that that uh, relationship going uh, because they're they're grouped together and and they all have this and they're put into the um, the environment uh, um, so so that works for me there I can I can see it clearer I can understand it clearer that way yeah. kind of thing so if that makes any sense that's yeah well they, they speak a different language than than we do I mean objects do Right. And the relationship mm -hmm. between objects. So uh, whether it be scale or color or these ones have beautiful lines and textures and this this little fence like arms that go around it, like create this little contained space mm -hmm. that says sit here, that says look here. Like it's a it's like an open fence a little bit. But to me and I do love the crack in it, because if anybody has seen old leather, the darn stuff cracks every time mm -hmm. right? in an old chair. So. The crack is perfect. I mean, it really is. And the high gloss. And, you know, I've seen this very similar to one of my grandfather's chairs. And and it had a crack in the leather. And uh, and he never fixed it. It was just that was the way that stuffing was coming out. And he sat in it to his end. But it said so much about him, the chair, because it was part of him. That's where he sat all the time. Mm -hmm. So this one has a really nice historical feel. Like there's a really nice... I, I love this. I don't know if it's a shaker style, you know, the, the, the just feeling of these lines, these verticals and this horizontals that are connected. And like I said, it was kind of a, it's an elegant chair. It's a, it's a really elegant chair. Beautiful. But it's nice that it, it would have been probably thrown in the refuse area, if not given to somebody that could find another life for it. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just really respectful. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thanks. These, these ones really caught me. I mean, I, I felt these ones feel like um, clocks on the wall, like they have this time piece to them. So can you tell us tell, tell us where you're going with this one? I mean, I, I love the piece and I love the, the story between these two, the yin yang thing that's happening a little mm -hmm. bit with them, but they do feel like uh, time pieces at times. I mean, when I looked at them, anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, this one here is 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 one one uh, one sculpture. Uh, it's the same one, both yep. uh, pictures. So it, I'm just showing it so that uh, you see when it's open and when it's closed. It's called eclipse. So it's. I guess typically speaking, I'm seeing the 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 round as the sun, where the the moon is in front of it, and where we see the glow coming in, where where the sun's uh, out, um, back out again, etc. So um, that one's a lot more clear to me <laughs> from the start to the finish. So it it, it kind of depends, but but really, it's it's. Um, it's kind of a persona. You have two feet, and you have the perhaps the body, the heart uh, area here, and you know the the head. <laughs> the head also, I, I, I tend to like to uh, to add double meanings. Uh, it's not like I force it, but a lot of times it 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 falls naturally, yeah. and. Uh, it, 
for example, this the the glass um, piece in in the center. Um, <clears throat> it was the mold of it um, was taken from um, a log, you know, for, for when we uh, when we fire the the furnace, the wood furnace. Um, there's all kinds of log when when the truck comes in and stuff. And a lot of times there's some beautiful gnarled log, logs and stuff. But and I found this one that I liked in particular. I took the shape of it and then brought it into the uh, the kiln, the glass kiln, and and added. I think I have three yeah. or four. I forget uh, layers of glass and melted these on there. So I had this piece uh, for, geez, maybe a year. And, and it, it grew. It's like um, I played with Lego a lot when I was younger. <laughs> yeah. And putting things together, it's not forcing it, but it trying it there and seeing if it feels right. And then all of a sudden shivers, right? It's like, oh, yes, that. That works. That speaks to me. That says something. That that feels right. Yeah, uh, I like it. Uh, so yeah, that kind of thing. So so is the background is that metal or is that glass as well? Uh, yes. Thanks for asking. Yeah, the background is metal. So it's 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 a yep. cutout uh, with a plasma cutter, and um, so you have a little catch on the top. It's hard to see, but if you see, there's a little catch, and you can turn it on and off yep. kind of thing at, at will. Um, yeah. And it, it's it's an environmental piece. It's called Eclipse. It's also uh, a piece about, uh, I, f I honestly feel that what we're going through worldwide, and that's my opinion, that um, we're in a big major changes. And it's, it, it we're in a section there's a, it's an eclipse. Um, I don't think it's going to last, but it, it's it's very bumpy and it's it feels dark and it feels threatening and that kind of thing. But there's hope. Uh, I, I strongly <laughs> believe. In, I strong I, I strongly believe in hope. Uh, and and I think I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, we all have to have that if you're going to produce products uh, and. So uh, go into subject matters like we delve into. I think you there's a reason for going into that. I mean, you solve a problem, figure out is there a way out of it and give some hope to other people that would see it. Why else do you have shows and presentations and uh, and do an in, and spend the time doing an installation? It's 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 an awareness piece and people need to see it from in a three dimensional way or, you know, they can see it in a, a number of either go to an art gallery or they even just walk coming to your house or your studio. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, this one, I, I've seen some of the drawings. You had drawings of this thing and some aerials. I never put them all in. I thought people can just get the feeling of, yeah. uh, of this. So, and it said it was a table in, in, in the wording in it. And uh, can you, can you walk us through? It's in a gallery situation, I guess. And yeah, uh, that's, um, oh, I can never pronounce that name. Uh, um, I think it's Ruben Gallery in, uh, they're going to punish me for this. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a uh, University of Moncton. They have a gallery there. Okay. Uh, better Ruben something. Anyways, um, yeah, they're going to slap me on that one. But anyways, um, it's... Um, it's a table, uh, à la table chez soi, um, is at the table um, chez soi. I'm not sure how that would translate well, but it's like at, a, at the table at home kind of thing. It's almost like that. And, and um, interestingly enough, um, that came about, I was um, setting up a, an art show for uh, Our Voice Notre Voix. Um, I'll explain it later with uh, Eugène Leblanc. And um, it's the art show was about uh, uh, mental health and it was mainly people showing their drawings uh, about their own experience for different um, 
for different reasons. And, and, and so we were laying this out across the gallery. And this idea came to mind because I was kind of, you know, when you see all the work, then you get a different sense than when you, we had spent a few weeks before, you know, choosing the, the art and and deciding how it's going to lay it out. But when you see it in the gallery, then it gives you that synergy of all of them together. And it's it's bigger than, you know, single ones or even the sum of them. Of, of all those so in in that was i had this 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 vision or this thought and at the time uh, i decided i was going to do it but i didn't have the tools with me i didn't i tried it and it didn't work so i i said no nah, i'll leave it and i came back two three years after and I worked it, uh, decided there's a metal frame to hold the, the piece of wood. Um, and it's, um, it's, it has a lot to do with uh, being feeling uh, closed in. Like when, when I'm at the table, or it's, it's not necessarily about myself, but it's about uh, being in constraints, and I don't want to give it too much, um, I was going to say too much information. I don't want to narrow it down to my definition either. But but to me, there was that sense of, of being closed in or cut off or, or, or <clears throat> it spoke yeah. to me about, about loneliness, feeling lonely and the fear of being lonely. And... and <clears throat> On the picture, you, we don't really see, but on the table, there's there's a hole. We see the uh, the shadow uh, on the floor. There's only one. There's two lights, so it creates two um, uh, two openings on the on the floor. But basically, it's it the, where the plate is. It's cut out where the knives and forks is are. Uh, it's also cut out, and where the glass or the drink would be, that's also cut out. So so it was like a a bottomless place to put your nourishing um, food or your nourishing thoughts or your nourishing things. And it, it can be taken both ways. The, the carpet, who puts the carpet in the kitchen? <laughs> but it feels comfortable. There's the idea that I'm, I'm closed in, but I feel comfortable. It's not necessarily, it, it can be helpful, but it can also be constrained Constraining. Constraining, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I I should have done an inset on this one, but it was I didn't want to ruin. Oh, the that's shot. okay. Uh, of the, but I but I like the fact that there was only the one hole. It, it feels that gives the loneliness feel to it. It's not like there was four holes, mm. but there's four place settings. There's only one place setting. And I looked at this and I thought this is a very cool idea. I mean, you know, and I like how the the light goes through on through the floor. And, and shines on there. So mm -hmm. no, it, it's minimalist, but it, wow, it, it, it does have uh, some impact. And you can you can sit there for a while and, and read in a lot of different things into it. I, and I think I see this, this is personal going as we far, go farther into your, what we're gonna do, this, this feels very forest-like as mm -hmm. well. It feels this, how, how tall is uh, the piece? Um, uh, let's see, I think it's, uh, six, probably six inch, uh, six feet, six, six foot. Feet yeah. Yeah. Um, just trying to get the scale. Meters. Yeah. Yeah. So when a person walks up to that, it's almost, you, know, oh, yeah. it's, you sit down at that. Yeah. No, it's a lovely piece. So when it gets you into some of your forest stuff and your installations, I, I love this piece. I mean, I've seen a number of other pieces, uh, how other artists are trying to respond to. I guess similar situations. I mean, we all are looking at things differently. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this one has a, um, the shadows are probably as important as the objects and uh, the, the feeling if you ever walk through a forest, the how shadow light covers the path, you know, and, and you, and you, and you continually walk through this. And I love the dark space. I mean, you're walking into this black, um, can you explain a little bit 
where we're going with this? I don't want to read too much into it either. I mean, I, I see what I see into it, but yeah, yeah. Well, you you should. You should and, I mean, should yeah. I don't want to lead. I don't want to lead the conversation that way because it's it is your conversation. You're good. Um, yeah, it's um, it's um, that was part of uh, three installation I did within a month in a gallery, uh, gallery. Uh, uh, Gallery Dues in Moncton at the Aberdeen uh, Cultural Center. Um, this was in, oh geez, I forget the date, but a few years back. And and basically I covered the walls with uh, a black a black plastic. Uh, I, I, I wanted to really um, bring, bring us in. <laughs> And there's still that that sense of uh, almost claustrophobic. A few pe people told me oh, I didn't like it. I felt claustrophobic, <laughs> and, and I can understand. And that was partly the the point. At the same time, the the installation itself, and you can see a little bit on the walls. There are some um, shadows of those trees on the wall. Basically, I had a friend. Uh, 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 helped me with uh, shining some light. It was it was a performance at, at the opening, and um, I was pos positioned him um, behind, and the lights were, um, you know, the shadows would, would hit the. Uh, it's a, it's a mylar, and and I I draw that. Those in each installation I did after, I would reuse those uh, for um, drawings on the background. Long story short, there's that lamb. Uh, this it was it. It kind of gave me a sense of uh, of the soul behind. Um, oof, there's a lot to say, but yeah. at the same time, um, yeah, the the. Well, I, I look at this and I'm feeling there's there's depth in this piece. I mean, part of it is because the floor is angling way out into into a V, and it takes your eye back. I, I love that piece with these suspended uh, branches that are almost they're different scale and sizes. So you, if you really s squint and look at this, it's it's like a bare forest, and you you're you're definitely getting that feeling in that in the installation. So if that's all you get out of it. That that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. You can read as much as you want into it. I I, I love uh, I love that. And then there's the metal piece in the foreground, uh, that's horizontal or perpendicular to to the verticals that are hanging from the, the mm -hmm. thing. So I, you can read in again more stuff as to what these things are. But as an installation, I think that it, it feels successful. And I mean, knowing uh, what the problem is that you're I don't know trying to solve or just making a statement on or talking about. I mean, with the performance, what was that about? You know, how did that play with this? So we're just sitting here. We don't see the performance. So we don't, you know, we're, it's a one-off. You know, we're looking at something like this. But Can can I add something? Uh, just sure. Just a yeah. quick uh, parenthesis. Um, the, 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 those uh, trees, uh, dried out uh, trees, basically, t to me, it, it's, it spoke to me about family, uh, strange enough. Um, in, in the middle piece, that's what I was trying to say earlier, the middle piece, uh, there's actually also a, a, a dead tree, a, a dried up dead tree in it. And inside it, 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 yeah. It, yeah, inside it. And the name of the piece is called Continuum. And it's basically, it, it, it spoke to me about life, that there's a, cir a circle of life in the forest, you know, a, a tree, um, maybe a neighboring tree falls, et cetera, and then it, it, it goes into, and, and the, um, the aluminum piece in the center, it op it's open on bo both ends. So there's that flow. I, I was even thinking at one time, maybe I should put some water and stuff, but that was <laughs> too many things sometimes doesn't work. So, yeah. anyway, so I, 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 I like the metal piece because that really says a human contact. Mm -hmm. There is human context, uh, good, bad, or ugly, but it, it's there and it's it's perpendicular to the natural resource that is there. So there's some agitation. So mm -hmm. you know there's a confrontation, but even within the family, you know, there's a family of trees or whatever that be, but there's some 
we were we're hindering it somehow. I, I, that's how you can read stuff. It's like a storybook. I mean, you just how you how do you like to read it? But yeah, okay. I just got to move on here. We got to try another one here. Sure. Keep on going in some of your works here. So the this uh, was this part of the same show. Um, well, that was the first show. There was three. I, I oh, three I, shows. I, okay. Yeah. So this is the first one. Uh, um, this is called El Gosam, and uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it means I feel, therefore I am. And it's taken from Descartes saying, I think, therefore I am. But in, in, in my opinion, <laughs> our feelings are, are just as important, if not more, than our thoughts. Uh, but anyways, so, so it was also what you see, there was two... Um, images here, uh, you see, um, uh, how can I say, um, it's to cut out, how can, how can I explain it? Um, they're actually one in front of the other. Um, oh, okay. if, if perhaps if we start with the right side one, that's where we would enter. There's, there's that uh, long vertical and in the top on the top of that vertical there's a little glass window a square glass window um, uh, glass piece and you have that cut out and and it was it reminded me about um, a feeling of separation with myself and a longing to reconnect with self and the whole with others you know what's that that kind of thing, and, and then the the piece on the left side is more like the person. We, we don't see all the angles, so it might be hard to to explain. But basically, it's it's the the persona that's um, that has that that part that's still alive, maybe barely, maybe maybe you know. Um, <clears throat> I don't always have words. That's why. <laughs> that's why I draw and paint. And, yeah, I know. And, I know so. the feeling. But no, in I, a general yeah. sense, that that part is inside the house. That's where it's confined. And this was before the uh, the COVID uh, uh, scenario. So I, I suppose I could have uh, exhibit that after, and and that could be in context too. But anyways, in a, I, in I a think, broader sense, yeah. that's a little bit where I was going with that. I think it's always there. I mean, COVID just ramped it up a little bit, right? So we just made us focus in a bit differently. But no, it's just a, it's a it's a it's a nice way to look at a different type of way of looking at an installation for a subject matter like that. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about your drawing and your inspirations. You you mentioned that this this gnarled stump is sort of in your studio as a, a thing, and I I see. And there's uh, is it a dragon? I think a dragon drawing that you've been working on some animal like drawings, but I can see where maybe some of these ideas are coming from too as well. You see animals and structures inside some of this root structure from from wood and they inspire they I, as an artist, I work back and forth between drawing and sculpture. Do you do the same? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's not necessarily organized. It's not. It's it's a lot of it is spontaneous. It's uh, it's not. Um, there's a. Con At first, I was concerned that I would be too too everywhere, but then uh, I'm starting to realize just in the past two three years that I'm starting to see, realize, see, understand um, the connection. The and and. It's interesting that you put these two together because uh, I hadn't put them together. But it, it's the line, I guess, the the, the movement I see in in forests, uh, uh, in water, in um, uh, driftwoods. You see it better in driftwoods, or when we cut. Um, you know how there's there's a, there's an object. And or there's a rock and it's going to contour around it and it's going to grow. It's going to expand as well and stuff. And and the drawings or my line 
has that tendency. It's stuff that I like. I, I like in in nature. So there's a tendency to say, and it's not necessarily cerebral, 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 <laughs> liberal. Thank you. Um, it's it's more um, the the drawing that you see here. This one in particular actually freaked me out when I first did it, and and the. I, I guess the, the best way I can explain it is that I've been doing these drawings, I don't know how many, but um, in really experimenting how I can, what if maybe the, the, the context will come later, but what if, um, what if I let myself draw without really preconceiving anything. You see, what if I drew and even if I see a face or an eye, I just I just keep on drawing. Almost like I, I try to, I, I'm listening, paying attention to what I'm thinking too, and almost trying to be in a, in a meditative state um, where it becomes automatic we've heard of automatic writing. What would happen if it's automatic uh, drawing? Does that mean it's entities? I don't know. I, I'm not necessarily implying that. But at the same time, I'm curious to where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And this one in particular, Le Didin, it felt after I did it, it's Le, uh, disdain. It, it, um, it almost felt ugly and uncomfortable and and difficult, and we see it on an angle, so a little bit hard to see. But but obviously, I I saw this figure, and uh, so there was that there's that push and pull. Um, um, hmm. I, I don't think we have to make pretty pictures. I mean, okay. yeah, no, the, that it's, it is what that, it is, and I think. Yeah. I think this is soul searching and uh, uh, you look at a lot of other artists, they, they delved into um, doing death masks and doing drawing of cadavers and doing all those things, which are even a bit more grotesque, you know, cause they're actually using actual things in front of them to draw from. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think these things are all interconnected. They, they all belong together in some way and, yeah, are you ability? Do you have the time and ability to have it done in your lifetime? Maybe not, but like to have it all drawn together in, into one place that they all make sense together. I think we're all kind of working in little mm -hmm. pods or in, a, or in a circle around, and they all meet in the middle at some point, pieces of them, but never all of them. Mm -hmm. I don't think, but I think they all depend on everything else to feed that center section. I think you need to draw and find inspiration from a walk and a, and a different thing. But I love the piece. Now here's some photography. Your photography is like your, like your installations in drawing. They're mystic and mysterious. Um, you can actually see a little bit of the forest on the top right on this one, but you're not telling me too much in the picture. And it's a, I think you've got one in blue of a wave or something too. We've got some other ones that people need to go on the website and look at is, his, the other pieces of his work were closing in on our time a bit, but mm -hmm. um, and I love, uh, you know, I love the fact that these are mysterious. This is as mysterious as the last drawing mm -hmm. just in the photography and uh, uh, planning something that's not sharp focused on everything is difficult. It's, you know, because you're trying to say something completely different, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the photography? Then we got to move on to one more slide. Here. Yeah, sure. Um, well, um, I enjoy looking at uh, close-ups. Uh, you know, in nature, there's there's the vista, and also there's the little things, right? Uh, it's in my walks, and and I've always been fascinating with fascinated with macro photography, and doing glass. Um, I decided, what if I took close-ups of some of the pieces I did in class? You know, they're kind of distorted and stuff like. But I mean, macro close-up, and and I'm using. Uh, I'll give you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that was not supposed to happen. Uh, so basically, I'm I'm using a. Um, 
I'm using a um, um, a lens, anyways. Um, yeah. Microscope lens, sorry. Um, and and when I'm peering into these grain of salt size areas, um, I'm seeing these little uh, landscapes. Wow. And I'm stopping and I'm saying, oh, okay, yeah, that's interesting. I like that or that speaks. And, and I just click it away. And it's fascinating because I just move it two centimeters, one centimeter, and it's like, oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the like, world, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it transports me. Uh, I, 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 this is one I can see myself underwater, perhaps, or it could be anything. And if I turn it upside down, it gives me a totally different atmosphere, different things. So, yeah. Anyways. When you go macro like that, it, it can... If you think about every just your desktop alone, the millions of worlds that are there within that space, and it's trying to, I guess, I like that almost like an installation. It's like understanding how everything is connected in, in, in say, it in a forest. I mean, whether it be the, the ground or the, the cyclic thing that's happening in the forest, that everything is connected, even the micro microisms, you know. Microbialisms, I think we have word too. <laughs> Can't help. <laughs> well, we'll go to something really tangible here. This okay. you were working on this this last summer, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, I, I watched this on you posted as you kind of went along. And uh, can you tell us about this? It's a garden, is it not? Is it a garden area? Yeah, it's a community garden in here in uh, Kajawik. Um, and uh, they commissioned me to, to do this uh, signage, uh, the lettering and the gold leaf and the sculpting. So, uh, yeah, so the opening, uh, I was able to do it. <laughs> it was it was almost didn't make it because uh, the month of August uh, was really heavy rain and I just didn't have time to work. So uh, um, and you have to work on location on this one, too, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially yeah. the sculpting. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's uh, so yeah, this is a beautiful yeah. gateway. You know, it's a nice, you know, it feels very family like and in in welcoming. You know, you have that. Mm -hmm. it, it has a nice, it has a nice feel to it. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I, I just thought we'd throw in some tangibility into something here as well. It did, but it it feels, uh, yeah, this feels important. I think mm -hmm. good. I just had to end on this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's great. We had a yeah. We had a, delved into a very little bit about what you're what you're doing, and uh, I, I appreciate you being able to take the time to talk to us about some of your art. I mean, I mean, it's ongoing and it's complicated, and it's there's a lot of depth into what we're doing. Oh, there he is. I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I agree with Paul. It's very. It's beautiful, it's complicated, and there's depth. So here's the famous question I ask everybody. Uh -oh. I feel like Actors Studio, right? So if somebody wants to buy some of your work, what does it start at and what does it go up to? As Paul glows like an alien angel for us. You mean as far as the price? Well, sure, unless you're giving it away for free. And in that case, oh. shipping and handling is great. So yeah, yeah, so if I want to buy something, like what's the what's the, the least expensive piece of work and what's the most expensive so people get a range? Um, I love doing this to artists because they yeah, never know. It's, it's a tough question for me because I haven't, I can't say I have, I have some prizes online right. and stuff, but I can't say I've, I've been really prolific at, at showing my work and putting prices and putting it. I have a, a little um, a store on my website, but it's kind of hidden and. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that when I was on your, when, when I was on your little, website, it's an event yeah. to find things. Yeah, exactly. So it 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 could, roughly speaking, okay, it's from five hundred to five thousand, et cetera. Okay, that wasn't that hard. That's Canadian, though, right? Yeah, Canadian. So oh. basically, a dollar fifty U.S. to seven dollars. Okay, so there you go. The rest and in euro, it's like twenty five pounds, twenty five pence. There you go. Okay, you go. that's what we wanted to know. Yeah. There you go. Well, it was a pleasure. So thank you so much. Thank you. It was, your stuff was great. I loved it. That's why Paul's the expert in 
you know, talks about the depth and whatever. And I just go, it's beautiful and it looks great. And that's it. So I figure out this glow. I don't know what's going on. I like the glow. So, <laughs> well, Serge, thank you so much. Everybody have a happy holiday. Tomorrow is, th uh, today is Thursday and it's the last day of Hanukkah. So to all our Jewish uh, listeners and watchers, hope you enjoyed the show. If you would like to purchase some art, all the links will be below. It makes a nice gift for the Gentiles. There are holidays coming up, you know, the make-believe one. So we've got that <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. So everybody have a wonderful day. We'll see y'all next week. Cheers. Hey, hang on there, Serge. Bye for now.